Atlantis lifted off on time into a clear blue Florida sky, carrying the seven-member crew on mission STS-117. With the June 8th launch, Commander Rick Sturgo, Pilot Lee Archambault, Mission Specialist James Riley, Steven Swanson, Patrick Forrester, John Danny Olivas, and Clayton Anderson were off to carry out the next phase of construction on the International Space Station. Their mission had been delayed by several months after hail at the launch pad damaged the external tank, requiring time-consuming repairs inside the vehicle assembly building. Once Atlantis and crew reached the orbiting outpost, the astronauts installed the starboard three and four truss segment with its solar arrays. The installation and activation took four spacewalks, bringing the additional power supply to the station online. During the first spacewalk, Jim Riley and Danny Olivas connected power and data cooling cables, released launch restraints, and deployed the four solar array blanket boxes on the S4 truss. Next up, spacewalkers Patrick Forrester and Steven Swanson prepared the solar alpha rotary joint between the S3 and S4 truss segments for rotation. From inside, the crew also began the retraction of the solar array blanket atop the P6 truss. Riley and all of us conducted the third spacewalk. Supported by the shuttle robot arm, Olivas repaired a protruding piece of thermal blanket on Atlantis's left orbital maneuvering system pod, while Riley installed a hydrogen vent valve in the forward section of the Destiny Laboratory. The two moved to the top of the P6 truss to assist in completing the retraction starboard side solar array wing. On board the station, the Russian crew members and ground controllers worked to troubleshoot computer problems that were resolved by the end of the mission. Forrester and Swanson completed the fourth and final spacewalk of the mission, wrapping up all the planned tasks and finishing some jobs that will reduce the workload for future spacewalkers. Along with supplies, Atlantis also delivered Clayton Anderson, who assumed the role of Expedition 1516 flight engineer. He replaced astronaut Sunita Williams, who arrived at the station in December aboard Discovery during mission STS-116 giving her the record for a long-duration single spaceflight for a woman. With their work complete, Atlantis and crew had to extend their time in space by another day when bad weather in Florida prevented landing. The next day provided no weather relief, so the crew ended its 5.8 million mile mission at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The perfect touchdown at the desert runway brought to a close another successful shuttle flight and space station construction milestone.